corrected. Now, this week we sat down with Liz Boardman, a senior client partner at Corn Ferry, and I started asking her why how Corn Ferry begins the search process. It's a good question. There's a lot of research on our end and a lot of <laughs> intelligence gathering that we start with. But we've been doing this for a while now, so I think we have a pretty good foundation to start from. Clients come to us, the NFL, the NBA, across leagues and teams, and they'll say, here's a challenge we have and here's what we want to solve. So first and foremost, we get to know the client and we get to know their different uh, unique qualities and their cultures and try and figure out what's going to be the best fit versus going to one big list of people. We try and figure out who those people are that are going to really map to the organization, to the team. Now, do they have a wish list? Do they have like a prototype? Or do they just say, listen, this is all in your hands and we'll listen to what you have to say. You're the experts. Yes. No, every good client has a lot of a lot of wishes so and that's our job is to make sure that we we really understand what they need and so for a head coach search they might want someone who's more offensively or defensively minded for a general manager search they might want to focus on someone more analytical gender and diversity is always a, a, something that comes up something I focus on a lot and so we we really try and understand what are all those specifics but you know, I work with a man named Jed Hughes who's done this for 42 years and was an NFL and, uh, and Division One football coach himself. So he has a pretty good idea of what <laughs> succeeds, and sure. I learn from him. And it's uh, it's uh, it's really an honor to to find out uh, to find out all those qualities. It's got to be more than just a data search. It's got to be more than just analytics. I mean, gut feel, intuition, the human aspect of these one-on-one -on -one interviews have to play a major role in it as well, right? Well, one of the things Jed's designed over the 42 years he's done this is he designs a kind of a pick list of qualities. He's a PhD and and does psychological assessments. And and we ask actually the the clients who are often the owners of the teams and all the ma major stakeholders, what are the qualities that you're going to prioritize and they range everything from presence and charisma which could be um, you know more a more superficial quality but commanding that room to the high intellect to um, analytically driven and so we we really rank those and then we map people against those qualities are you giving them tests are you giving like a little bit of a stress test of what they they could be up against yeah so on the executive side we do uh, se executive assessments which essentially is we have the organizations at the outset and the stakeholders whether it's the CEO or the chair of the board, whomever is making the hire, take it themselves to say this is our ideal. And we know it too from having done extensive interviewing with them and, and due diligence. But then the finalists will take those as well. It take it as well and it will map towards what is the best fit based on what the client has told us and based on a database of uh, hundreds of thousands of comparable uh, leaders. And so that's actually pre proprietary for Corn Ferry. We have something called our KF4D and we've built a database over many years but then uh, in our sports practice generally we also have a subset for very specific roles which brings me to the real main topic here because ultimately what we're seeing now is we're seeing more diversity in the workspace because of this right yes yes we see more diversity in the workspace because of a lot of things and I think some of it is just the natural evolution of women becoming more and more involved and frankly being invited to be more and more involved in sports. And I think also it's because organizations are getting savvier and they're understanding that their consumer base is largely women and women do a lot, have a lot of the buying power in a household. Um, they understand that they need to reach diverse audiences. So Latin American audiences, um, audiences, of, uh, minority audiences and what they're tuning into, anyone who is a consumer that they wanna reach and so it's, it's not just a cap to capitalize on that revenue potential, but it's also to make organizations more holistic and make them have different perspectives, which is why bringing women in and bringing minority leader, leaders in is so important. And, and it's really started to take off in the past couple of years. Yeah. Val Ackerman, mm -hmm. uh, the, the head of the Big East, yeah. um, Becky Hammond, now an assistant coach with the San Antonio Spurs. Um, are, are we seeing this, I guess the racial threshold has already been surpassed by sports, certainly back in the 1940s in baseball. Are we seeing maybe a gender threshold that is being surpassed by sports right now? Yeah, and you know, I worked very closely with Val Ackerman. I led that Big East Conference Commissioner search. I know her story inside and out, and she's a very close mentor and friend of mine. And the reason Val is in that seat today is a lot of hard work. Woman, man, Val is just extremely qualified. I mean, what Val had done, in the she had she'd advocated the college university level. She had worked in the pros. She started the WNBA. 
She learned under the tutelage of David Stern. And you don't get more credentialed than that. And we're seeing successful female CEOs, executives in sports. We could have a commander in chief that is a woman yeah. very soon as well. Yeah. So are there particular attributes that maybe a woman brings to the table, maybe a different perspective that, uh, that makes them better suited for leadership. So I had a little bit of a debate about this with one of my other mentors who's the president of the Los Angeles Clippers and she said that she never thinks about being a woman. She thinks about just doing the very best she can and her quote is jump high or don't, meaning <laughs> compete and compete like as hard as you possibly can or don't. My feeling though is that women have a really good intuition and sensitivity. Not to say men don't have it, but I think that women have it uh, a lot of times predominantly and so you have a sense sensibility of working with managing people, managing politics in an organization, managing people up, managing people down, and empowering people. Women really have that intuition, and Val certainly had that. I mean, Val worked under one of the most talented and amazing commissioners of all time. Um, you know, and she learned how to work with a personality that was extremely strong and manage that personality, but impress him with her intellect and her and her intuition. And I think that's important. So, so no longer the guys ruling with an iron fist, the you know the men ruling from a position of power. Now yeah. you kind of want a unifier at the top yeah. leading the ship, don't you? Yeah, and it you know it, it it doesn't divide on gender lines all the time. You'll get unifiers who are certainly men. And you'll get unifiers who are women, but. But I think there's something to be said about just a different lens and perspective and sometimes that um, that intuition that women bring. And finally, where do you see this journey going within the next 10, 20 years? So I think that so the, there's a lot of momentum and we're, we've talked about some of this momentum, on, especially when it's on the court and on the field. So when you have Jen Welter at the Cardinals and you have Becky Hammond at the Spurs, what that does is it shines a light. Sports shines a light generally in our society on what are the good things that are happening what are the bad things that are happening it gets exacerbated and blown up in um, in our world but when the good things are being modeled in sports it'll spread to the rest of the world so we've talked about how uh, you know presidents uh, presidents of our country were involved in sports George W Bush owned part of the Rangers Obama's uh, president Obama's uh, brother-in-law was division one coach sports are are in a part of the fabric of our world and so if sports are within sports women are succeeding it it is a great example for the rest of our world. Well, thanks so much for coming in and, and shining yeah. a little light on this process, how you yeah. get to this point, and maybe um, where it's heading into the future. Yeah, Liz great. Boardman, thank you so much for coming in. Nice to meet you.